Today's guest on Behind the Membership is Steve Pavlina, a prolific name in the personal growth space and owner of the Conscious Growth Club. Steve actually has a bit of a different membership model to most you'll hear on this podcast, which is one of the reasons that I was keen to speak to him. Steve only offers a 12-month membership, and it's at a higher price point of nearly $2,000. He also only launches the membership once a year, so his membership is small and intimate by design. Steve shares some great insights into why he picked this model and why it's worked well for his audience and the kind of results he helps his members to achieve. Listen in to hear how going to Disneyland every day for 30 days was what inspired Steve to first start his membership, why alignment and attracting the right members is absolutely key for a personal development community in particular, how 30-day challenges work for his membership community, and how his low-key five-day launches bring him six figures, allowing him to focus on his members for the other 360 days of the year. There's a lot of great stuff in this episode, so let's get the show started. Welcome to Behind the Membership with Callie Willows. Real people, real stories, real memberships. Today I'm joined on the show by none other than Steve Pavlina, owner of one of the most popular personal development sites in the world. Welcome to the Behind the Membership podcast, Steve, and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really looking forward to chatting with you, and I know your model's a little bit different to what many of our our members and our listeners may be thinking of when considering a membership site, so I'm really looking forward to kind of talking with you a little bit more about that. Thanks. I'm happy to join you today. Uh, that said then, could you actually start off by just telling us a, a little bit about the Conscious Growth Club and what it is you're providing? Yeah, basically it's a, it's a group where we bring growth-oriented people together. So people who I might describe as enthusiastic students of personal growth, you know, people who uh, are really into reading books about um, optimizing their life, um, becoming more disciplined, becoming more creative, building their courage, anything that, you know, has to do with uh, improving yourself as a human being. And then, you know, helping these people come together in one group and we basically just encourage the heck out of each other, like every week. You know, we have a very um, active private forum and it's not a huge community. I think we have like about 90 members right now. Uh, and, uh, you know, just basically um, constantly trying to work on ourselves and make um, either incremental improvements in our lives or really big transitions. A lot of members go through transitions where they're like quitting a misaligned job or trying to exit a very misaligned relationship. And then we help them with the recovery process afterwards and getting into what they really want to be into after, after that. Awesome. So it sounds like it's quite a, a varied audience in terms of what you're helping with people with rather than it being a very specific focus for you. Yeah, it's, it's not the kind of thing where we have this specific niche and we just niche down really tightly where we're only focused on productivity. We cover anything loosely related to personal development, like any kind of problem you might have in life. So on our coaching calls, like one person might be talking about an addiction they're trying to overcome. And another person might be talking about, uh, you know, a big lifestyle change, like becoming a digital nomad or something. And then the next call might be about somebody's relationship with their mother. (laughs) Uh, uh, The next one might be about, you know, uh, becoming more productive on a software project. So what I love about that, though, is that there are there are universal things we can do to grow. Um, like just being honest with ourselves. So one of the one of the principles we work on a lot is truth alignment. Just getting really clear about what's true for you and how you really feel about a current situation. Um, so it doesn't matter so much that we cover so many different areas because the tools and the practices that we work on a lot are pretty much universal. Yeah. And you mentioned you've got around 90 members at the minute, but the thing that I find really interesting about your approach is that not only is it, it's a 12 month kind of fixed program, isn't it? That you only launch once a year. So there's kind of that finite um, time period to it, but it's also a, a lot higher cost than a lot of people think from a membership site. So it's just under $2,000 if my memory serves me. Yeah, 1900 right? $1,997 a year. Yeah. So you're really getting people that are committed in there, both financially and time-wise in terms of their investment in the membership site, which I think is a great approach. Yeah. We only, we only open once a year. It's late April each year for just five days. So there's only a five-day window every year you can join. And we let people know well in advance that it's coming. But we honestly don't do any billing. There's no payment plans. We don't have a money-back guarantee. So there's no refunds. It's just an honor code. 
if you're going to do it, then do it. You're in, you're in or you're out. Um, and part of that is just my own value system. I'm not looking to grow the biggest membership site, but I want a really tightly aligned community. I want people who are in the community who will really contribute and who will really, they really want to get results from it. So we attract very results oriented people. That's one, um, you know, as a side comment, one big thing I noticed as a difference between having a paid private community versus a public forum. We, years ago, from uh, 2006 to 2011, we used to have a very popular uh, personal development forum that was free and open to everybody. And we attracted, I think, up to, uh, I think it got a little past 50,000 members um, and over a million messages posted. We were getting, you know, sometimes 500 to 1,000 messages per day uh, being posted. And so it was very active, you know, lots of community engagement. I had to have a, a, a staff uh, all volunteers of a dozen moderators just to keep the place sane because um, we ran a really tight ship. We didn't allow spam and trolling and all that stuff. Uh, so it was a very, um, very kind, caring, compassionate community. But one thing I've noticed is that the people in the free community, they really came there to talk about personal growth. But in a paid private community, people go there to do personal growth. They, they go there to take action. They want results. So if you're paying $2,000 a year for a membership, you want some kind of result for that. And that really makes the community work is that every member wants to, to get a good bang for their buck. And so because of that, it really raises the standards inside the community. Yeah, I think that's that's really interesting, actually. First of all, I can't imagine managing a community of uh, 50,000. So I've got no idea how you did that for so long. But as you say, it it's, is interesting that difference between that paid community and particularly, as I said, being that higher end of the cost for you, you do have that that bigger commitment there and that bigger focus on getting results than a lot of even other personal development memberships where, you know, the other end of the personal development spectrum tends to be kind of the, the lower cost, 10, 15, 20 dollars where, you know, per month, where you're not necessarily going to get that commitment as you mentioned. Yep. And I partly I got into that model because I committed to other groups uh, years ago. I, I made a big expenditure and paid like twelve, fourteen thousand dollars to join uh, a membership group, and I got tremendous results out of it. And then um, this year, I'm in a twelve thousand dollar a year group. Um, in a previous year, I was in a thirty thousand dollar a year mastermind group, business mastermind group for one year. Uh, and I found in these paid private communities, even though you're paying quite a bit, it's not about how much money you're paying. It's about what, what your investment is, like, uh, what are you getting out of it? You know, what's the payoff for you? So if I could spend $30,000 on a group, but I come up with, you know, a six figure idea for, just from a casual interaction with one of the members and it works really well, which actually can happen, then it's well worth it. And then it's actually, I have to look at it as being a foolish idea not to invest in that type of thing. Yeah, definitely. And so when did you first launch the club? Uh, Conscious Growth Club, it, we rolled it out for an early access phase starting in April 2017. Um, so it's been going for a little over uh, three years now. So we're just kind of in the first couple months of our fourth year. And But for the first two years, we were in this sort of early access beta testing phase. And then we did our full official launch um, just uh, basically a year ago uh, in April of uh, 2019. And so that's when we came out of our early access phase and, and uh, started opening it up to more members and, and basically trying, you know, now we have a good sense of what the community is about. Part of that first two years was just exploration, trying different things, you know, figuring out, okay, how should we do the coaching calls? Um, fi you know, figuring out the different subcategories for the forums, um, building out more and more features, also building some courses. And so, when the community got big enough and I thought, okay, now this is the time, then we did a full launch of it. And now we just continue with that cycle of doing annual launches. Awesome. And what made you decide on only launching annually? Was it because you're offering it as a 12 month program or did you just only want to do that one year big launch kind of thing? Because of the types of transformations that we're working on, um, a short term membership isn't going to work for people. So the way I designed the, the community structure is I want to help people get results. It's really designed around helping people get results. And if somebody's only going to join for two or three months, I can't help them get serious results. You know, it takes a long time to go through major life transitions. I mean, people, if you see people like who joined three years ago and where they are today, they've gone through so many changes. <laughs> Their life can be radically different. They may be living in a different uh, city or country. 
Uh, they may have a totally different career path, a different relationship life. So we work on some really big, deep transformations, and that's the kind of work that gives me a lot of joy. Uh, but it takes time. It, you know, it, it takes time for people to build the courage to make those types of changes. So it, I deliberately did it as a one-year mem- minimum mem- mem- membership because I wanted, to discour- I wanted to discourage dabblers from joining. I, you know, I interact enough with the dabbler types through my blogging. I just didn't want to build a community that was centrally focused on that. I, I thought it would just be much more fun and interesting and, um, and engaging for me too, just to work with the people who are, they're seriously dedicated. Like they're in this for the long game. And really I, I tell people, think of it as like a five-year commitment. You only have to renew on an annual basis, but you know, if you're going to go in with this type of community, it's better if you're really all in and you start thinking, okay, let me invest in this for the next five years and see where it'll take me. Cause then you're going to get better results. Awesome. And do you think you'll always keep to doing just that one annual launch for it as well? Or do you think you'll introduce more launches in the future? It's possible. I might do two a year. I don't see myself doing more than that. I don't see myself launching again this year. The once a year thing really works um, because that way, only one time a year, we do this big marketing push. We do all, you know, all the billing happens in the week and then it's done. There's no billing throughout the year. There's no having to market this throughout the year. There's no selling throughout the year. All, all the administrative stuff just dies after that week. And you know, other than just the onboarding process, which may take a few weeks, getting new members up to speed, but then we can spend a good 11 or more months out of the year just focusing on serving the members. And that is refreshing. Also, you get all the money for the year all at once, and you don't even have to think about the money the rest of the year. You have your budget. There it is. <laughs> you, know, you, get all, you get paid up front for the entire year. Uh, you, there's so many metrics you don't even have to look at because they're irrelevant. So there's just something I like about the simplicity of that model. Um, I don't really want to do the work of running a monthly membership site I, I want to do the work of just serving and working with growth oriented people. So it's, it's really about the focus is where it helps so much to have that kind of model. Awesome. And something I love is that in the Academy, you're really generous with sharing the results of your launches, what you've done, how everything worked. And so I know, you know, obviously you're doing this annually, but it's, it's a six figure launch when you do launch it based on the, the numbers that you're getting. Yep. But I love that even though it is a hugely successful launch, you're not going for lots of fancy bells and whistles with your launches. You, you, from what I've seen, you tend to keep things quite low key and, and down to earth. And is that something that you've come to via, you know, trial and error, or is that just something that comes naturally to you in terms of taking that low key approach? Um, it's really about what my community appreciates. So I, I talk to them and ask them uh, to help to help me design the launch process and for what they like. So I don't think about the launch process as something manipulative to try to like trick people or, you know, convince them. It's more to inform and educate people and make a genuinely good, honest, honorable offer. If I feel like the offer is really solid, then the selling kind of takes care of itself. And I'm simply looking for people who are aligned with this offer. I think a person who's a good match for the community, they'll look at the offer. They'll be like, that's a rational choice. You know, like I should be in this community because it's going to help me. Um, I want people like that where it just, they see the obviousness of the, the, it's a good offer for them. And so uh, my launch is basically put up a, a, like I do a very detailed video describing what the offer is, you know, what's in the community, sharing what it's like. Um, that's like a one hour video for our last launch. So it's, it's richly detailed. Most people are not going to watch the video, but the ones who make it to the end, they have a pretty good chance of, of joining if they're aligned with that type of thing, because they'll st- start seeing a lot that they like. Um, and then this last time we also did something new where we did a, uh, like a, I think it was about a two hour, maybe 90 minute um, Q and a webinar during the launch week. And as part of that, we brought in, maybe like half a dozen members. Actually, I think it was maybe four members um, offered to, you know, share their thoughts on what the community was like inside. So the people who were thinking about joining could talk to some actual members and ask them questions and interact with them. And that actually helped a lot of people decide to join because they're like, okay, you know, hearing from the real people inside, <laughs> I know that, you know, that can make a big difference. Um, so uh, keep you know, the launch doesn't have to be really a lot of bells and whistles and marketing. I just think, um, I think a lot about the ideal people 
And if I were one of them, what would I want to know? And how would I want the launch done? So it doesn't have to be peppering them with emails constantly. You know, we don't do crazy like three emails a day for a week or something like that. Uh, Cause that would just, that just annoys people in my audience and it annoys me too. <laughs> so we, we keep, we try to keep the annoyance factor down to a minimum and just be, you know, here, let's just be straight with you. Just be straightforward. Here's what the offer is. Take it or leave it. It's not, it's not complicated. I love that. And I think, presumably most of the people that you're talking to during your launch are people that are already following you on your blog and they already know you and your style, I would imagine. Yeah. And so that's, I'm not selling this offer to cold traffic. Uh, That's very key. In fact, um, on a recent uh, call, I did a little survey just to see, I think it was our orientation call that we did in May. I did a little survey because I was curious to see um, how long the people who had joined had been reading my blog and I think something like, uh, if I'm getting the number right, I think it was something like 60% had been reading my blog for five or more years. Oh, wow. So it, the relationship has a long runway. <laughs> uh, I've been blogging for almost 16 years now because I started in 2004. So it, it, you know, every year. <laughs> and this year, I'm actually blogging every single day. So I've done over 180 posts just this year. Um, you know, so it's a lot, lot of activity in my, in my blog and I have a lot of long-term readers, but of course, not a lot of them are going to pay $2,000 a year to join this kind of, kind of club. Yeah. So I'd love to know what made you decide to start blogging every day this year? Uh, a personal challenge. Uh, that's one of the things we do inside Conscious Growth Club, actually. So I'm not the only one doing a daily blogging challenge. One of our members is doing that too. Another one is doing a daily artistic challenge. Um, so every month, as this is part of the membership, every month we do a new 30-day challenge. And it always starts on the first of the month. So since today is the first of the month when we're actually recording this, we're starting a new challenge. Um, and so uh, th- this month's challenge is to install a simple habit, like a five-minute daily habit, but do it consistently every day for, th- for 30 days. So the members are in the forums. You know, We always have a forum post about this, and they're discussing what the what they're going to do for this challenge. And then we do, you know, progress logging to, uh, and people check, you know, check off what they've done it each day and and such. Uh, Last week, uh, I I like to participate in these challenges too. So last month, um, our challenge was um, something about doing something to rejuvenate or restore your energy. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a challenge of uh, stopping work by 4 p.m. every day. So every day in June, I stopped work by 4 p.m. And that was interesting, you know, to see what that was like, because it really freed up more personal time. Um, so it, one of the things we just proposed at the beginning of the year was doing a 365-day challenge. If you want to start, you know, for the year 2020, do something every day. It really builds your self-discipline. It really builds your character strength when you can do that. Um, I've done some 365-day challenges in the past. And I, I'd never done a whole year of blogging every single day since I started. You know, I might have 100 posts, 200 posts a year. Last year, I think I only had less than 40 posts for the whole year. So not a ton of blogging. So this is like way, you know, blowing that out of the water just to see what it'd be like to really dive into the creative aspect. Um, and it's, it's been great. Awesome. And so are you creating those blogs like as you go or are you batch producing them and kind of scheduling them out? Nope, I don't batch produce them. Um, I don't have an editorial calendar. Don't create a list. I just summon an idea each day and write it. Uh, you know, it might take me 30 minutes, 60 minutes to write a post, depending on how long it is, and just publish every day as, as I go. I, I, like, I like being in the flow of that present moment. I like not knowing what post I'll, post I'll write tomorrow or even today. I haven't written today's post yet, so I still have to do that. So, you know, it's just come, I get the ideas in like a minute or two, and then I'll just write. It's probably a good thing in 2020 as well, because I don't think this year's <laughs> gone how anybody planned. So nope. I think uh, if you'd have pre-scheduled lots of stuff, you'd have been doing some last minute edits there. Yep. <laughs> Very true. I wrote a lot about the coronavirus, actually, because I was like, OK, this is something on people's minds. It's, let's write about it. Cool. And so with the 30 day challenges that you mentioned inside the membership, are you deciding what those challenges are going to be? Are you getting input from the members on, on what each monthly challenge will be? Yeah, we thought about creating, you know, like a calendar for the whole year, but we realized it's better to just really take the pulse of the members and get a sense of where 
the energy of the community wants to go. Uh, so my wife is the one who, ch who chooses the challenges. We always have a discussion about it and then kind of settle on an idea. She may propose an idea. I may propose an idea. Somebody in the community may, may, may come up with something. And if we really feel like oh, yeah, this would be a good one, you know, a good balance for what we've done in the recent past, then let's do it. So we might have one month where we do a health, health challenge. Like one month, we had a challenge to exercise every day for a month and define what kind of exercise you'll do. Some people might do yoga. Some might um, you know, go running, uh, biking. It could be anything. Weight training. Um, another month, we might do, uh, say, a productivity challenge. You know, This month, we're working on habits. So we can shift and move in all kinds of different directions to give people a lot of variety throughout the year. And we always make the challenges fairly general so people can choose the specifics of how they want to do it. Like if we say it's an exercise challenge, we don't say what kind of exercise you have to do or how long you get to choose that. So that way people can participate in the group activity, but still individualize it for themselves. Yeah. I really like that approach. Cause I think a lot of the time with, with things like that, it's, you can be too prescriptive. So a lot of people end up not doing it because what you suggested they do isn't what they want to do. So I like that you kind of, you've got that structure, but then you've still got a lot of flexibility within that from people for what it sounds like. Yep. And people can also propose their own challenges at any time throughout the year. Uh, some people do, they, you know, they'll say, I'm just starting a 30 day challenge right now to do this. They can start any time during the month if they want and even invite others to join them. And so other than the challenges, then what else are you providing in the membership every month? Uh, quite a bit. We have coaching calls um, three times a month that I do personally. The, the group calls on Zoom and we record those too and post them in a, in a portal. Uh, we I mentioned we have the private forums. Those are busy and active every day. My wife and I both are active in the forums every day with people. Uh, we have um, three courses developed so far. Um, and there, one is a 30-day video course called Deep Abundance Integration. So it's about shifting from scarcity to abundance in your life. Uh, that's our most popular one. We have another 60-day audio course called Submersion, which goes deep into your relationship with life, your relationship with reality, um, and exploring that. So you can actually have more trust in life, which helps you be able to um, exhibit more courage, courage, take more risks, um, and have more growth experiences. And then the third course, which we just developed and launched earlier this year is called Stature. And that's a 65 lesson audio course, which goes really deep into exploring your character. Like who are you as a person? So it's kind of like a, the most introspective course we've done going deep into your personality and your character traits and who you are versus who you want to be and how to, how to create shifts in your, your internal framing of your identity. Uh, and then we'll be doing another launch, uh, later this year of a new course. So every time we launch a course, it's part of Conscious Growth Clubs. So the members don't have to pay extra for the courses. They get those included as part of their membership. Uh, but we also do separate launches for the courses too. So that's like a whole other um, income stream from the course launches. Uh, and the new course we're, we're going to create um, probably late summer, early fall is when we'll start uh, developing this one, is uh, I'm tentatively calling it Amplify. And it's, it's basically about creative productivity. So there's always a tension between creativity and productivity because creative people can kind of get lost in the idea space and not actually get something done and published. Like, you know, the novel that you never get finished, uh, the music album that's always on the back burner. <laughs> so this is kind of an invitation to come together and work on um, doing some kind of creative project and um, actually being productive with it, getting it done, getting it created, getting it published, released. Uh, into the world. And so as part of this, I'm taking on a, a challenge for myself, which is to do something I've never done before, which is to write a novel. So um, I always think about, um, you know, courses and the membership site itself really as about um, keeping pace with my own path of growth. So it's a growth experience for me to participate in the community. It's a growth experience for me to do the course. It's the same thing with blogging. I don't want to just blog about stuff I know too well. I want to always kind of be on the edge of growth and lean into um, creating something new and fresh. So it's, a, it's an interesting experience to, to do it. And it doesn't feel like I'm just living in my past. I really like that. And it, it's, it's just leading by example, essentially, as well, because your members could presumably see you doing all of this and, and talking about this and it's working for you. And, and that encourages them then to, to take part as well, I would imagine. 
It, it, it's true. Um, a, a lot of people actually um, get involved in the community because they really like my lifestyle um, and they want to have a similar type of lifestyle. Not identical, but there's some things they like from what I've done lifestyle-wise. Like I haven't had a job since 1992 and I've always been kind of an, on an entrepreneurial path. Um, so I set my own hours. I have very a lot of flexibility. I like to travel a lot. We, we would have been traveling to, uh, quite a bit this year, uh, including going to Northern Ireland and Scotland. Um, but those trips all got canceled because of the virus situation. Um, but, uh, you know, a, a travel rich lifestyle, um, a lifestyle where you get to spend, you know, a lot of time doing interesting personal growth explorations and experiments. Um, some of them are a little strange. Like one time my wife and I, uh, we committed to a 30 day challenge of going to Disneyland for 30 days in a row, like oh, all, wow. day, <laughs> all day going to Disneyland for 30 days in a row. We did that one in 2016 and it was wonderful. And I blogged about it along the way, like what it was like. Uh, and it was fun. It was interesting. And it was, it was exciting. Oddly that Disneyland challenge actually helped to lead to the launch of conscious growth club because while we were going to Disneyland all the time, we just kept thinking like, like one guy who's, you know, Walt Disney who started, drawing mouse cartoons, he got into this, you know, this, this frame of thinking big. And he just, he built, you know, the original version of Disneyland, which opened in 1955. So uh, it made me think like, if, if he could do that, what could I do if I thought bigger? So it actually made me dream bigger. Um, and, and it was several months after that, the Conscious Growth Club launched. Um, so it was actually, sometimes I get a lot of growth from directions I don't expect. You know, sometimes I just do experiments to go in a new direction and they, they can impact, you know, you in ways you, you would never predict. <laughs> um, I really like that idea. I'm finding that feeling the need to do a 30 day challenge myself now. Um, so you mentioned there about the inspiration to start the Conscious Growth Club, um, kind of coming off the back of that 30 day Disney World challenge. So had you already been selling other courses and programs before that? and the the club was kind of an extension of what you were already doing or was it something completely new for you at the time no it was something really new so we didn't have any courses when we launched conscious conscious growth club but i had the intention of developing courses um so eventually um i think it was in uh, 2018 so conscious growth club launched in april 2017 and then finally the next year i think it was august 2018 we developed the first course which um I found a good way to develop a course, by the way, which is to launch it first, then create it. So the way I launched it is uh, first I figured out a need my audience had, which was, you know, a lot of them were struggling with financial scarcity and they wanted to have a more abundant lifestyle. So I said, okay, you know what? I can help you with that because I made that same kind of transition myself. I struggled a lot in the early years of my, uh, of my business. My previous business was a computer game de a developer. And uh, I, for five years, I just sank into debt and went bankrupt. And then I figured out how to make some kind of changes in the way I approached life and business. And every year since then has been abundant. And that was over 20 years ago. Um, so I thought I can do a course on this and help people. But I, I wanted to just go, you know, not like spend months developing something and then launch it. So what I said is, I'll do a live webinar with you every day for 30 days in a row. So it was like a 30 day challenge framing, you know, every day I'm gonna hop on a webinar. And I think I'd never done a webinar before then. Uh, at least not delivering one. I've been on other people's webinars. But I was like, let's do it. I'll hop on a live call with you every day. Uh, I think we average 73 minutes per call. And, uh, you know, I basically sold it for $97 and people came on the calls and then um, they could attend live every day. And we got the recordings posted the same day. And they, we, I created a little membership portal that uh, they could get the recordings to as they were being posted. So some people watch the recordings later that same day or the next day. But I'd say about two thirds of the people finished all 30 days. They, they watched every video, um, either live or shortly thereafter with the recording during those 30 days. So it was like an incredible completion rate, you know, compared to what some um, courses see. So I thought, and people were, you know, raving about it and what they, and the value they got out of it. Some people made really big transformations and they really did upgrade their lifestyles afterwards. Um, so much into mindset and just, you know, so many different tools you can share during that time. It turned out to be a six, 36 hour video course then that we created. And then immediately I just rolled it into um, an evergreen thing. So it still sells to this day for the same price. So uh, speaking to that with the other courses that you're offering, are they all available anytime now? It's just the, the conscious growth club that's kind of that once a year, or do you run launches for the other products as well? Whenever we create a new course, we, we launch it 
Um, and often there's like a launch discount um, or extra bonuses or something like that. We didn't do that with the first course with deep abundance integration, but like with our second course, when we launched it, it was a hundred dollars off um, during the launch price. I think the second one we did for $297, but you could get it for $197 when it launched. And then uh, we also did that same thing with a course we launched um, earlier this year. So the, the launches have been, have been good. I think the first launch ma uh, made like $65,000 in two and a half days. And then the next launch, I think we did maybe a week or 10 days for the launch. And I think that was something like $94,000. And then we had an early, another launch earlier this year. And that was, I think, $102,000 So in, in a week or two. Um, so it, and then you, you know, of course, get the evergreen sales afterwards. So the launch brings a lot of people in all at once. Uh, and I also love launching it first, then create it. So I just say, here's what I'm going to create. And I share the offer. And I say, I'm going to create it along the way. So the lessons get published as we go. That puts enough positive pressure on me to, to do the course because now I have people who've paid for it, signed up for it. And it's my loyalty for them and wanting to honor that promise that motivates me to, okay, let's deliver it now. But then what's also cool is it's very adaptable because every time I post a new lesson, I get feedback from people on what else they want to know. And that helps me figure out what the next lesson will be. So I don't have to map out the complete course in advance. I just go lesson by lesson based on what people want to learn. <laughs> so that, and that, that gets it done. I love that. And so when you transition to that, to Evergreen then, how are you effectively selling that? Is that just through the website? Yeah, through the website, um, my email list as well. Um, uh, you know, anyone in Conscious Growth Club gets it as part of their membership also. So because of that, it's a nice incentive to join Conscious Growth Club. The value proposition gets better every time we release more courses. So we have three courses now. By the end of the year, we'll have four. And then, you know, going forward, I might do one or two more, more courses each year, depending on what members want to do. And, you know, a course can be very flexible. It can be video, it could be audio, it could be live. Uh, I think of them more as deep dives. Like we pick a certain topic, an area of life that you want to improve, and let's go really deep into it. So the, the courses are really long and quite in depth and uh, they, they can be challenging to do too. You know, they, it really gets you working on yourself. But then if you do that work, you get some nice results afterwards too. Speaking of challenges then, what would you say has been your biggest challenge since you launched the Conscious Growth Club? Oh, great question. I, I would say um, attracting really aligned members. I think if I made one mistake in the beginning, it would be um, not really clarifying as well the type of member that would have been a really great match for this type of community. Uh, one thing that actually didn't help was offering a money back guarantee when we first started. Another thing that did not help was offering a payment plan. Those like an eight payment plan, you know, where you can make smaller payments um, instead of just paying one once all at once. And the problem is when when you offer things like a money back guarantee or payment plan for this type of program where it depends so much on attracting members who are going to contribute to help each other because the encouragement among members is a big part of it to make it really work. It's not just like I'm signing up as an individual and I'm going to access the resources of the site for my own benefit. The community aspect is really important for this type of group to work because it really is a club uh, in that sense. Um, so we really emphasize that. And by trying to make the requirements looser, we just attracted members who are just not the right match for it. You know, people who would start fights inside the group and stuff and just not good. Um, so I really tightened that up and we got rid of the money back guarantee. We got rid of the payment plan. And some, some members, you know, said, I can't renew then because there's no payment plan. I was like, okay, we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> you know, I, I just say, I'm just not going to deal with that anymore. Um, the refund rate was for people who did the payment plan was like four times higher and if they didn't do a payment plan, there's a hint and a half that something's a little off there. Uh, people saw the payment plan like a monthly membership. Like, oh, I can just stop doing the payments, even though it was still a one-year commitment. So they were dropping out. And then I, I don't like that of, uh, I don't like that relationship that it creates. I don't want to be somebody's creditor. You know, and that, and it's just really awkward when somebody has been per participating in the community and then they run into financial difficulties partway through and they can't continue making the payments. And now I'm supposed to chase after them or kick them out. I, I don't like that dynamic at all. It's just not the kind of relationship I want to have with the people in the community. So um, just by really focusing more on the type of relationship 
that I want, the right people for the community, that was a big lesson I had to learn. Uh, really, really tighten that up, get that definition much clearer, really be very clear and, and explicit and direct in who's a good match and who's not a good match. And deliberately, you know, now and then I'll deliberately do blog posts to try to scare off certain people who won't be a good match for, you know, not just, not just a conscious growth club, but my blog as a whole, just people who are, they're not really a a right fit for this. (laughs) People who are filled with anger, conspiracy theorists, things like that, you know, people who are really not going to invest in personal growth in a community environment where you have to be into cooperation. Uh, I want to repel those people actively. So I've learned to do more and more of that. And that is working beautifully. (laughs) That's, yeah, I think that's a, a really interesting point there, especially, as you said, with, with the kind of community you're creating, where it is that close knit, uh, you know, people working and taking action, then yeah, having the right people in that community, I imagine is absolutely paramount to the success of the whole thing. Yeah, it's actually a surprisingly vulnerable community. You get one bad apple in there, and it can mess the place up. And so I've, you know, I've had to make the difficult choice sometimes of, of uh, booting members out and, and we retain that option. If you're, you know, causing problems for the community, we have a really strict uh, set of rules to follow. You know, you're not allowed to do personal attacks. It's, uh, you know, it, we, we have a rule like it's an LGBTQ friendly community. So if you're going to be anti-gay or anything, don't join. Um, you know, just having our set of standards for the, the type of uh, environment we want inside it really helps um, just knowing that you can't necessarily build a community for everybody if you want to have a lot of civil community engagement that's really mutually supportive. Um, and this year in particular, we have a just beautiful, great community. It's just like so much support and love and connection. And it's just like really raises the vibe of everybody. And it just makes it a joy to run that kind of community. And so I'm just like super sensitive to those vulnerabilities and always watching out for them because you get one bad apple in there starting to mess with it. And I'm like, nope, you got to get out. <laughs> You're not messing with our, our paradise here that we've, we've created because it really is like a, just a, a beautiful environment for people who are into personal growth. Um, just imagine people who are, you know, positive, enthusiastic, encouraging, you know, they're encouraging the heck out of you every day for whatever kind of challenge you have, even if it's like a tearful one where you're dealing with some really difficult stuff. Um, you know it's a place to go for that kind of emotional support. And we need to have a space where people can be vulnerable, where they can trust the community. So really the, the key thing that we're watching there is to create a high trust community. And a high trust community is a very vulnerable one, if you think about it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's hard to create that. Um, it's hard to maintain that, but it's very, very worth doing. Yeah, I, I really like how just protective you are of that community from the sounds of it. I think um, that's a shining example to community owners because I think a lot of the time there can be a fear of, you know, not wanting to kick somebody who's a bad fit out of your community and things like that. But as you say, sometimes it's the best, well, a lot of the time it's the best thing you can do if you know somebody shouldn't be there. Yep, because you you have to consider how much it's degrading the membership experience, the value for the other members who are not causing problems. You know, when somebody starts picking them in their threads or, you know, personally criticizing them for having a certain desire or a certain goal, <laughs> uh, that, you know, making people wrong for even wanting to be into what they're being into, um, just being very judgmental, very harsh with people, it just doesn't really work with it. You know, we want to have a community that's encouraging and positive and gentle. Um, and then I noticed so many other qualities come out of the group naturally when it's very high trust playfulness is a huge part of it. People, when people trust each other, they laugh, they joke a lot. Um, so one, one of the main benefits I get from this community is actually just the laughter. It's the, it's the fun of doing it. It almost is like, uh, like my own version of Disneyland, <laughs> um, you know, just a place to go where I can be uh, happy in that, in, in, you know, in, in doing the work I do and enjoying it in a playful way and not having it feel like a daily slog all the time. It sounds wonderful. And so aside from, aside from bad apples, obviously with it being a 12 month program, as opposed to month to month, you you don't have to worry too much about ongoing retention, but presumably from what you've said, people can renew year after year. Um, So you do have that kind of annual retention element that you need to pay attention to. 
Yeah, we, we haven't had a, you know, because we were in the early access phase for a couple of years and we just really did our first main launch this past year. We've only been through one renewal cycle. Um, you know, it was like our first main launch was in 2019 and the early access people got grandfathered in for that first year too. So, so some people might've paid once and got up to a three-year membership um, while we were kind of in our beta mode. Um, so we've only got, you know, it was kind of an, an unusual situation because the renewals were for some people who kind of faded out and they weren't really active in the community. So the renewal rate wasn't that high this, this past time. Uh, the one I'll look at much more deeply will be next year's because um, that's like really the first time we've had our normal launch and renewal cycle now with the members who aren't carried in from the early access phase. Um, so that's, that's the, that's the thing we'll have to look at. Um, one thing I have seen though, is that it, it's not so much the numbers that matter. It's really the alignment. Um, when I, when I, you know, it, when I look at the renewals, I'm thinking of it more on an individual basis because it's not a huge community. And I think, do I regret somebody leaving? You know, sometimes it's like, okay, that person left, but you know what? I don't think they were a great fit for it anyway. <laughs> uh, so it's not necessarily a bad, a bad thing. Um, but if I see somebody leave and I'm like, oh, it really would have been great if they renewed. And then I, I like to figure out why. For, for this past year is kind of unusual too because the coronavirus situation has been flaring up. And so our launch was the last week of April, which, you know, was kind of, things were getting really spiky then. <laughs> uh, so a lot of people who wanted to renew or join simply said, you know, things are too risky right now. I got to keep an eye on my finances and I, I can't do this. Or they were really wanting to join, but they're just like, I can't risk it now. I don't know if my job's going to be secure. So I, I was like, okay, I understand. Um, fortunately, our group has enough members and enough, uh, you know, my blog has been stable for many years and I have other sources of income too. So even if um, there was no income from this, it would be fine. Like we can keep it going. So um, the, the cool, that's the cool thing is like charging enough for it and not having so many members means you can provide a really good service and not have to worry so much about the money. That's a, a really good point. And so you touched there on the fact that obviously when you were doing your launch this year, it was during kind of peak coronavirus, for want of a better way of putting it. Were you actually tempted at the time to push back the launch or were you always going to just go ahead with it anyway? Yeah, I was tempted. Um, but I, and I thought, you know, is that a good idea? Should I delay it? This is a very unusual situation. And I thought, you know what, I'm building Conscious Growth Club as something to really endure. For me, I see this as like a 20-year project at least, like something I really want to sink my teeth into and invest in. And in a way, I modeled that after Disneyland because I, I learned that Walt Disney, one of the reasons he wanted to create Disneyland was to create something that was never finished. Um, because with some of his earlier movies, like Snow White, Bambi, Dumbo, he kind of you know, regretted that he could never go back and change it. Like once the movie was done and released, the project's over. And so having a project like your own personal Disneyland where you can keep tinkering with it, keep evolving it, you know, he, he's perhaps the guy who invented management by walking around. He, he would go to the park and physically walk around there, sometimes staying in an apartment on the, on the grounds itself and just walk around and point out things that needed to be fixed and talk to the guests. And so uh, I, I kind of love that model. And that's, that's one of the reasons I chose this. And so go, going back to your question about the coronavirus situation, I thought, no, CGC is this, is this stable structure that's meant to endure. So even if there's a, a virus, a natural disaster, we're going to launch. We're going to have that annual beat, that rhythm that's stable and that people can trust. And I thought it goes along with, you know, trusting the stability of the community. And so I thought, I don't think it necessarily sends the right signal if we, if we, you know, freak out over the virus situation and say, okay, we're not going to launch. I, I just, I think it's better to just accept we may have a lower launch and that's okay. You know, and, but we're, we're still going to be there. You can trust every April we're there. <laughs> you have that opening again. Yeah. I like that approach. And I would imagine that you also maybe had more people that actually had that need for, for this kind of community right now as well. Absolutely. It could have worked in our favor. Um, some people said, well, this looks like a good time to get into an online community <laughs> since I can't do much in person. Uh, and I, I've really liked that too. Um, that, that's one aspect that we always have to balance is, is the online aspect because a, com a competitor for that is in-person you know, connections. But we, tr we attract a lot of people who don't have a lot of in-person personal growth 
support in their lives. Uh, some people don't have any friends who are into, really into personal growth like they are. Uh, people who just don't get them think it's weird or strange, you know, that they want to keep improving themselves or work on their productivity or work on their courage or their self-discipline. They don't understand it. So uh, it, there's a, you know, a tremendous amount of value in just being able to instantly get into a group where you can have dozens of friends like that. One of our members recently described it as like being a kid in a candy store. And, and I can relate to that because um, there used to be a time in my life many, many years ago where I didn't have anybody in my life who was into personal growth and I was the alien, you know, it was different. Um, and now it's just so joyful watching how people are when they get with a community like this and they realize there are a lot of other people out there like them, but it's really hard to build that kind of group in person, depending on where you live. You know, some people have better access to resources like that where they are. Uh, and with the virus situation, it kind of makes this an even better value proposition. But we also want to temper that with um, doing in-person events so people can get together. Originally, I was planning to do a live event this October, but I took that off the table and didn't include it as part of the offer because the virus, <laughs> you know, the situation. Um, I've, I've done a lot of live events before. I've done 16 three-day workshops in okay. Las Vegas, um, most of them on the, on the Las Vegas Strip. And uh, they've been a lot of fun. And, you know, the community loves... Um, uh, loves attending them and get a lot of uh, growth and connection out of it. And some really long-term friendships there form. In fact, I met my, my wife at the first workshop that we did back in 2009. She, oh, was wow. from Canada. So she came down from Canada to go to the, go to the workshop. So I ended up marrying a Canadian that I you know, would not have met if not for these live events. Um, and there's been at least one other marriage that I know of that formed because of people meeting at one of these events. So I know that's going to be a big part of it. So I, lo I would love to have, when it's safe to do so, like at least one, maybe even two live events per year that Conscious Growth Club members will get automatically as part of their membership. And then other members can attend too. Maybe even doing like a, like a five-day event where say it's two days exclusively for Conscious Growth Club members and then a three-day public workshop where everybody can attend. So I get a couple days just with the, the CGC members and then, um, and they get to attend all five days. And then we have like three, no, the final three days being the, the public version. So then it's bigger and, you know, more energy, more activity. I think that would be a really cool um, combo to do. Yeah, I agree. I think that sounds really great. And it sounds from everything that you said, like essentially the Conscious Growth Club is the core of everything you're doing and that you know, you, yes, you're creating other courses and, you know, might do live events and stuff, but your members get all of that as opposed yeah. to needing to buy them separately. So that's kind of the, the core of everything from the sounds of it. Yep. It's the, it's the all in one thing. And we, we keep experimenting. We keep adding to it. Last year, we added a new feature uh, called quarterly planning sessions. So at the, at the transition between every calendar quarter, uh, which includes, you know, now at the time we're doing this recording, since we're just starting um, the third quarter of the year, we do a, a five-step process in the forums to help members set goals for the new quarter. So that we kind of review progress that was made in the past three months. And what do you want to accomplish in the next three months, the next 90 days, roughly? Uh, and then we do a Zoom call, which is kind of like a code review where I literally like go over everybody's goals that they shared in the forums. Um, and I, and I um, call out certain things that I notice about them, like best practices, uh, things you want to watch out for, potential problems like is your goal really vague? Is it unclear? Uh, is there no emotional context to it? Is it like one of those stuck in your head goals? Uh, is it kind of a sprinkle goal where it just looks, looks like you're trying to sprinkle uh, goals across different areas of life, but there's no rhyme or reason to them? Are the goals really personal? Do these look like they can be anybody's goals or are they really your goals? Are they goals that are socially conditioned by society? You think you're supposed to do them? Um, so we look for a lot of those kinds of problems, you much like you're trying to find bugs in computer code, uh, like having a second second programmer review the code. So it's, uh, it, we just did a, a call, a Zoom call uh, yesterday that took three hours because <laughs> they're going through quite a, quite a number of goals. Um, and I love that actually. It's, it may sound a bit tedious, but I actually really enjoy it because it gives me some seriously deep insights into what our members are working on. What are the real challenges? What are they really going after? What do they really want? Um, so I, that's one of the strengths of having a really aligned community is you really get to know what results people want and so that it helps you tailor new features and new um, offers, new additions to really keep the community um, focus in line with where they really want to make progress. So that's, that's, been, that's been awesome to see. And also seeing our members go through this process each quarter and get better at it. 
you know, where it, it holds them accountable. Like when you have to go back and look at your goals that you posted from the previous quarter and realize you didn't get them done, <laughs> that, that really sinks in, you know, and you think, oh, did I set the wrong goals? Did I not really work hard enough on them? Did I not work with the right focus? Did I not get the right habits in place? There can be all kinds of problems. Um, one thing we discovered through this is just personal growth. When you do it really well, it, it, there's a lot of depth to it. There's a lot of richness and detail that you're not going to find reading a book, 10 books, not even a hundred books. It's just so much stuff you have to learn through experience and it can really help to learn from the experience of others. You know, just being able to do something as simple as it sounds like setting four or five goals for the next 90 days and actually accomplishing them. That's really hard. Many people don't don't get to the point where they can consistently do that in their entire lives. <laughs> so if we can help somebody get to the point where they can do that consistently, or at least semi-consistently in like two or three years of membership, that's beautiful. I mean, that's going to be something that will serve them well for the rest of their life for decades. Um, so we, we work on these really difficult, hairy challenges that, um, you know, unfortunately the way a lot of personal growth books are marketed, they promise the world and like read this book and it'll change your life forever. You know, and it's, I don't think that does people a good service. So I try not to market this like that. I tell people, this is work. You know, this is like really deep stuff. You're going to work on yourself. You, you, may, you may think you're going to get really far in a year and you may not. You're just starting to get some of the basics in place. You know, you might have to go three or five years before you're really getting some juicy results out of it. It's a lifelong process, essentially, really. Yep, very much. It's, and so that's why we want the really the really committed members, because um, those will be the people that will get results. And I also think if we can help people get results, that's really the best marketing for the community. Um, I don't really have to invest in a lot of outside marketing because of the because of blogging I do. Um, that's enough to keep a good flow of members coming into it. But I, th I think it would be cool to grow the community as well, as long as we can keep that alignment and not lose the alignment. I would rather keep the community at the same size we have now and never grow it if, if I had a risk losing that alignment of the members um, just to go bigger. So I would not want to run a community that was twice the size uh, just to make more money. Um, if, if we, you know, if, if it was painful to run <laughs> yeah. and if members just weren't getting results, um, the, the really, the, I think the biggest rewards from this kind of thing are intrinsic. Um, seeing somebody get results, seeing their smiles, you know, like on a zoom call and how happy they are and remembering like a couple years ago, how stressed they were, and just seeing the transformation in the people, that's like what really, you know, gets into your heart energy. Awesome. So overall then, what impact would you say having the, the club has had on your life and business so far? Uh, it's made me happier, I think. Uh, I, I like that I have a really like long-term path ahead of investment in it. It's also made me more patient because I realized this is a really long road. <laughs> it's a really long process. Um, and it's, it's gotten me into um, just deeper relationships and friendships with people in the community. Uh, it's, I think it's really bridged the gap between my personal life and my professional life even more than it you know, was already bridged before. I mean, when, I'm, when my topic is personal growth and I write about that, it's like there already is a big connection between personal life and professional life. Um, but having a, having a community of people who are really working on this stuff together and getting results and then contrasting that with what I see elsewhere on social media. When I go to other forms of social media, like Facebook, I despair for humanity. <laughs> I just think, what is wrong with people? What is wrong with the world? This is insane. You know? uh, or I get kind of saddened by just how trivial things are. I'm like, people, this is what people are doing with their lives. It's, there's more to life than just posting cat photos. You know, let's, let's up our standards a bit here. <laughs> um, and and so this, uh, this community really, I think it gives me a, a renewed sense of hope. It's like really amped up my optimism for the future. Um, and just, it's also helped me realize that I don't really want to try to serve humanity as a whole. I just want to serve a slice of it that feels really aligned uh, to me and really focus on that because I don't, I don't really have conscious access to what the whole world is doing at all times anyway. Um, and so having a place where I can really um, sink my focus into it. And it just, it, it feels like um, the effort that I put into it really pays off. Like it helps me get results. It helps other people get results. Um, having that kind of space in your life is just immensely rewarding. And it just makes me feel like, great. I just want to like do this for decades. <laughs>
and not and not mess it up, of course, <laughs> not, not break it. So that's part of the you know reason that makes me very protective of it. I love that. And so, final question then: Is there anything that you actually wish you'd known earlier, or that you'd do differently if you were starting over again? Uh, starting over with the membership site, or yeah. starting over with blogging, or sorry, okay, um, that's a tough one. Um, I, I would say one thing uh, that I wish I'd done a bit differently is I made I made a very uh, generous offer in the beginning, which. Uh, I think was too generous, you know, like including the money back guarantee, including the payment plan, um, trying to make it so that we could attract a lot more members. And I think the problem was I didn't have as much trust that the idea would really work because it was a bit of an experimental idea. And if I actually um, trusted the idea more, I, I think that would have been really helpful in just making some better decisions. Uh, and, and tightening up and attracting a more aligned community. I think I tried to attract too many members in the beginning, and it would have been better to actually attract, say, half as many, but go for a more aligned community. So the, uh, probably the one thing I regret was not thinking deeply enough about um, the, the social aspect of the community and how it would affect me. And not it's not just about getting a bunch of people together and expecting them to socialize well, but really thinking of this as like, you're creating a, a, a community based on friendship, you know, based on um, mutual trust. So it's a tricky thing to describe, but I think it really links back to, I had to really trust the vision for this community. That's something that evolved over time. But if I could go back in time and do something differently, I would have really gotten myself like engaged with and in love with, with the vision of what I ultimately wanted to create. Like, what is my destination here? Um, and you know, instead it was more like, let's figure out what we're building. You know, let's, let's build the plane as we fly it. <laughs> let's figure out what we're building as we go along, which was okay. But then it also creates competing forces that you always have to push against. So, uh, yeah, I think I needed to be more of a bear with, you know, like just, um, be really strict about this is what we're building. If you're not aligned with this, don't get on board. That makes sense. And alignment very definitely seems to be the, the keyword running through everything that you're doing and focusing on as well. Yep. Um, I think it's something people really underestimate in business. You know, I've, I've been an entrepreneur for quite a while since, since 1994. And, uh, you know, in two and a half decades of being an entrepreneur, one thing I learned is just, it's not about like chasing after every sale and trying to make a bunch of money because you can really mess up your lifestyle doing that. You can really make the business a pain to run <laughs> uh, if, you, if you just chase after every sale or try to do shotgun marketing where you just like blast it out to everybody and you know, anybody, any warm body who shows up is a, is a prospect. Um, and thinking that you know, this is a life you're living too and your business is going to be a big part of it. So you really want to like have customers, clients, um, you know, uh, people in your membership that you like, <laughs> that you, and not just that you like, that you really like, maybe even love, like you really actually enjoy these people. You really enjoy connecting with them. Some people can be very aloof, you know, in, in running such sites, they just kind of hold a professional distance from it. I'm not that kind of person. I, if I, if I do that, then I will feel demotivated. Then I'll procrastinate. I don't really care enough, you know? So, Finding the community that you really care about comes down to the people right? and, and how aligned they are with you. You know, it's not necessarily about having tons and tons in common with people, but I think it really has to do with shared values. You know, you at least got to agree on some certain values. What's important to you? It, you know, how important is honesty to you? How important is integrity? You know, the, I, I'll even share the values of our community. There's just seven of them and they can each be just one word. Uh, Align. So alignment is a big one. <laughs> That's probably number one. Empower. We want to empower each other. Um, raise each other up. Um, not everybody wants to do that, but that's a big part of our community. Explore. We want to try new things. We want to dive into the unknown. Not everybody wants to do that. Care. We want to care about each other. Caring is a big part of our community. Not everybody's going to be aligned with that. <laughs> uh, play. So playfulness is a big part of it. Honor. We want to be honest and have integrity and create. We have a lot of creative people in our community. Um, uh, one of the big transitions a lot of people make is they go from non-creative careers to creative careers or businesses. You know, becoming an artist, a musician, a writer, 
speaker, you know, all kinds of things like that are, are common transitions are in our community. So just having that align, empower, explore, uh, care, play, honor, create is like our values of our community. What that does is it creates a shield that repels people that don't like those values. <laughs> and that's what we want. <laughs> That's great. And I think uh, that's probably the perfect message to to wrap things up on as well, because I think, um, yeah, those values are, are great. And as you say, it makes sure that you're creating that community that's going to not only be something that you enjoy and want to be involved in, but that's going to help your members get the best results as well. Yeah, yes, absolutely. So if someone wants to check out your site, your blog, your programs, where's the best place for them to do that? Uh, they can go to my website, which is stevepavlina.com. So S-T-E-V-E-P-A-V-L-I-N-A.com. Uh, and if you want to go to the blog, it's just slash blog after that, or at, or you can see the blog posts on the homepage too. Um, yeah, that's a, you know, the blog posts are a good place to start. <laughs> that's what gets a lot of people engaged with the community. There's tons of, there's millions of words of free content on the site, literally. <laughs> Awesome. So thank you so much for joining me today, Steve. I've really loved chatting with you and hearing all about the Conscious Growth Club and everything that you're working on. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this evolves for you over the next year, the next couple of years as well, as you continue to kind of refine and and relaunch and, and grow your offering as well. Well, thank you, Kelly. It's my pleasure. That's all for this week, folks. Thank you for listening to this episode and thank you to Steve for sharing his membership story and insights. I definitely feel like the key takeaway for me was how important alignment is, not just in your membership itself, but in your business and life in general. And I love how Steve has really fine-tuned who his membership is for and isn't afraid to remove those that aren't a good fit. What about you? What was your takeaway? Let me know over at talkmemberships.com. To download a transcript of this episode or view the show notes, be sure to head over to themembershipguys.com slash btm34. And if you'd like to see more of Steve, you can check out his blog at stevepavlina.com. And don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast app and join me same time, same back channel next week for another episode of Behind the Membership. Mm-hmm.